What's up guys? Today was finally the day where AMD announced RDNA 2 and the RX 6000 series of GPUs, the RX 6800, 6800 XT, and the 6900 XT. So as you can see behind me, we have the 6800 XT design, very similar to the 6800, uh, and the 6900 XT, very similar as well. Even though it packs a lot more performance, which we'll get into, it still keeps the same size form factor. Unlike NVIDIA, where the 3090 is a BF GPU, it's a huge, tremendous beast of a, a graphics card, and the size definitely contributes to that name. But overall, these cards were super, super impressive. AMD eked out almost 54% improvement with the 6800 XT versus last gen and a 65% improvement with the 6900 XT over last gen as well. So super impressive numbers there. And then it just got even more interesting when they started comparing the numbers to Nvidia. But before we get into the numbers, let's just quickly talk about the design and some of the features that AMD has introduced with the RDNA 2 architecture. So the overall design, really, really nice, really sleek. Uh, it's definitely not game changing like the RTX 3000 series card design was, but still really, really nice three fan cooler design. Uh, overall, really, really happy with what AMD did here. Uh, in terms of the other features that we're getting with RDNA 2, uh, of course, uh, in terms of IO, a single HDMI, two display port, and a type C connector on pretty much the entire lineup. Uh, Type-C hopefully will be geared towards virtual reality. Uh, so AMD looking out into the future a little bit with that. Uh, some of the other software-based improvements, we now get Rage Mode, which is an automatic overclocking inside of the Radeon software. We also get uh, the ability of 5000 series chips to now use the VRAM on these graphics cards, uh, which is honestly a really, really cool feature. And we'll talk about that when we get into the numbers a little bit more. And we're also getting some features that NVIDIA came out with with RTX 3000 and prior with this generation of AMD graphics cards. So we get latency reduction, overall system latency reduction, which AMD showed off a little bit in the presentation today. And then there's some word that they are also working on their own competitor to NVIDIA's DLSS. So that should hopefully improve some of these numbers down the line. So now let's get into the actual numbers. So with the 6800 XT, we're looking at 72 compute units, a game clock, a base clock of 2015 megahertz, and a boost clock up to 2250 megahertz, which is extremely, extremely impressive. You also get a 128 megabyte infinity cache, uh, as well as 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, and all of that at 300 watts, uh, which is an improvement over last gen, a, a big improvement over overall energy efficiency and power consumption, uh, and an improvement over the RTX 3080. So the RTX 3080 draws around 320 watts. So now looking at the actual numbers, they're neck and neck with the RTX 3080 at a 20 watt reduction. So as you can see, the RX 6800 XT is either neck and neck or beating the RTX 3080 at 4K. Keep in mind, however, that this chart is showing max frame rate. So it's frames per second up to. So from my small mind, the up to really signifies that they're only looking at max FPS. So we're not looking at average FPS uh, and that ginormous boost clock, that 2250 megahertz, uh, could lead to some really high FPS uh, peaks but we don't know what the sustained average FPS is in these games from this particular chart that AMD showed off today. So we'll definitely get those numbers when these cards come out. But for right now, I don't know that these numbers will definitely live up to the hype that they're at right now, but super, super impressive nonetheless. And now if we take a look at the same games with Rage Mode, that automatic overclocking enabled, as well as Smart Access Memory enabled as well. So Smart Access Memory, going back to what I said previously, is pairing a 5000 series Ryzen chip with one of these graphics cards so that it can share the VRAM from the card. Uh, so with both of those enabled, we see even bigger improvements over the previous FPS without those enabled. 
So up to a 13% improvement in FPS, which is sweet. Uh, really, software optimization has sort of taken a next step for AMD with this release, which is super nice to see. Now the RX 6800 XT comes in at $649. Very, very competitive against the RTX 3080, undercutting NVIDIA by $50 for, as we see, around the same level of performance. But to tag along with the RX 6800 XT, AMD also released the RX 6800, which they compared against the 2080 Ti. Of course, the RTX 3070 has not been released yet. It will be released tomorrow. Uh, so that is why they couldn't compare it to that card. But based on the numbers we've seen for the RTX 3070, we should see very, very similar performance between those two cards. However, AMD priced this one at $579, whereas the NVIDIA RTX 3070 will come in at $499. So I don't see why AMD went ahead and undercut NVIDIA at all the other price ranges, at all the other performance levels, yet left the RX 6800 priced above the RTX 3070. I mean, if you're willing to spend an extra $70, you're already spending 580 bucks. Uh, you can manage to get yourself a, a 6800 XT, which is far and away better performing uh, as seen in the numbers compared to the RTX 3080. For 70 bucks, it's probably worth the extra money to go with that card or step down the 80 bucks and go with an RTX 3070. But AMD did not stop there with the 6800 XT and the 6800. They pushed it one step farther with the 6900 XT. And that card is just a behemoth, even though it keeps the same form factor as the 6800 XT and the 6800 for that matter. It packs in a bunch more performance for the same power consumption, so 300 watts as the 6800 XT, as well as the same form factor, very, very impressive. So the 6900 XT jumps up to 80 compute units, so an additional eight compute units over the RX 6800 XT. Uh, we also get pretty much the same game and boost clocks, the same 128 megabytes of cache, the same 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory, and the same 300 watts. So it's really just the matter of adding more compute units to the silicon itself and outputting much more performance. And this card is directly competing with the RTX 3090, which is mind blowing to me. Everybody thought the RTX 3090 was like this holy grail of graphics cards. And then AMD comes out with this for $999, undercutting Nvidia by 500 bucks. And if we take a look at the numbers compared to the RTX 3090, AMD is doing it yet again keeping up with or exceeding the numbers output by the RTX 3090. And it also has rage mode enabled as well as that smart access memory feature, which we saw could provide up to 10%, up to 13% improvement uh, without those turned on. So you're probably gonna see slightly less uh, performance compared to the RTX 3090 with those disabled, but for two thirds of the price uh, and pretty much the same performance even if it does dip down 5, 10% for 33% cheaper price, definitely, definitely, definitely worth uh, the money. And, and honestly, really, really nice to see the competition against Nvidia from AMD. We've been waiting for this for a long time. AMD slowly, slowly been chipping away in the graphics card market, but never really catching up until this release. And Nvidia, probably saw some of this coming, which is why they kept prices the same as last year. Um, at least now we're starting to see some competition in terms of price. So hopefully this will lead to some price reductions in the future when it comes to future releases while still maintaining this increase in performance. Um, so which cards should you buy? That's honestly, of course, the big question. And it, of course, depends on what situation you're in. Uh, of course, you know, if you're rocking uh, an Intel CPU and you're upgrading from an NVIDIA card, maybe you want to stay NVIDIA. It makes life a little bit easier in terms of drivers and, and upgrading the system. Uh, but maybe you're building a completely new system or you're just getting started and you're building your first one. Then pairing our Ryzen 5000 series chip with one of these cards might be your best option. Uh, you're going to see the most amount of gains. You're going to be able to use that smart access memory. You're going to get, of course, the best CPUs that money can buy right now with the, the 5000 series chips 
Uh, and you're getting an amazing graphics card based on what we've seen so far. I would definitely wait to see what the reviews have to say when it comes to the actual performance, the real world performance for gamers, for consumers. Um, but right now it's looking like a great buy. And the big question will be, what about the stock uh, of these cards? Uh, Nvidia ran out of stock of the RTX 3080 and 3090 and really hasn't be able, been able to restock those cards. Uh, the 3070 probably going to be a very similar situation. AMD is probably not gonna be very different. They're definitely gonna run out of stock almost immediately when these cards come out. The real question is who can restock these cards quicker to get them in the hands of consumers? The RX 6800 and 6800 XT release on November 18th and the 6900 XT releases on December 8th. Um, so once those cards come out, they're gonna be hard to get your hands on, but hopefully AMD will do a better job than Nvidia and restock those cards quickly for retailers so that we can finally get our hands on one of these next gen graphics cards. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date on my latest videos. And if you have any questions, any comments about these cards or, or anything PC uh, related, definitely leave those in the comments below.